Raising an Army for God is our discussion this particular morning. And um, one, I just love it. Thank you, Sunday School, for seeing our children present here. That is the way to grow the church. I have always insisted, even if it's a family Sunday, I will give them time. The good thing I'm the preacher, I will finish on time. When we see our children do that, it's lovely, particularly the young authors. You are able to know what is happening in the Sunday school, and you want to inculcate the word of God in them every day, and that is a blessing to us. So raising an army for God is our discussion. There is an army that we need. You know, uh, recently you've seen people go on the protest. You need an army to go and combat and bring the situation to life, and those are our children. When we get old, our children will be holding us and taking us where we want to go. I pray that I don't get hold to be supported by children. When I'm just done, God take me away. But if indeed we raise them and I get there, I'll be very happy to be held by Peter and Melody and blessing. Amen? It is a blessing that you are old now, you are supported. Imagine you are old. Some of you have houses that actually have one floor up there. One of my friends can't go there. So you are supported to go there. You may have a lift, but I want to tell you, there is a lift you must create this particular season when you are living. Do we raise children or do we allow them to grow? It's a question that I want us to think. The Bible says that train up the child in the way they need to go. That, and when they grow up, they will not depart from it. It means you condition your children when they grow up. When some of us were growing up, and that this has helped me, actually we were told, I grew up part of the time when we used to have matatus where we would sit and face one another. Um, part of it, I look young, but maybe I grew in the village that did not modernize very fast. Now, in that matatu, I don't know whether it was a matatu, but it was a vehicle that would come at a certain time. And so all the people that were waiting for that vehicle would board. But the rule was, was there wakai? Jana was imam. I thought, some of you know that rule. Okay? And it helped, and it was conditional like that. We were told that you don't greet an old man without putting hands. Nowadays, unasalimiwa to, like, nikama unapigwa. You hug the old and all that. The children were raised. I remember that we used to have staff from one of our schools that didn't have a door, but you would not go to enter the staff room. <laughs> Some of you know these things. You have to, you are asked to go and knock in a staff room without a door. And children were raised to be able to do that. Classrooms didn't have doors and windows. They have some open spaces that were to be windows and doors. But you are prohibited to go through the window. <laughs> and somebody would write that. We were raised to do something. So I want to talk to us, and as I mentioned, I will use the word children in the context of both those who are young. Some of us who are teenagers and preteens, you will be part of my subject this particular morning. In the Bible, we see children being referred to in three terms, and I will allow me to make a reference to Psalm chapter 127. Maybe you would want to turn with me in the book of Psalm chapter 127. It's not our main scripture, but I want to allude something for you, for you to understand where I'm leading to. Psalm chapter 127, verse 3 to 7, the Bible says, Sons are heritage from the Lord. Children are reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gates. In this passage, I see the author of Psalms saying that children are gifts. So if you don't have children, please feel comfortable that children are gifts. You know, you can choose to gift me or not because you don't demand gifts. It's very sad for you to demand gifts. Nowadays, even our lovely girlfriends and friends on Valentine, they demand. It's not us. They are gifts. So God gifts you children. Are we together? Get me right there. Children are an inheritance. When you understand that, you'll be with me. The Bible says they are inheritance from the Lord. Now also, inheritance you don't demand. 
Yeah, you don't tell your father now, give me this. But our people who do that, they are an inheritance that we have. Also, the Bible says that children are arrows. They are arrows that we go with. And he says that we contend with war. It is with children that we have security. I know that you know, but you didn't know it's an arrow. Many of us believe that our children are our security. When we have them, even me, I'm secure as a pastor. That one time that when God calls us home, we will have people to take care of us. So they are arrows, and they thus need sharpening. I will focus on the part of arrows when I share this morning, that we need to sharpen our arrows for the army or for the war that is ahead of us. And so go, let's go to the main text in 1 Samuel chapter 13, where I want to read a passage and then be able to make some three reflections, and then we'll be able to finish and go home. The Bible says these uh, words in 1 Samuel chapter 13, from verse 16 all the way to verse 22. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 16, all the way to verse 22. The author says, Saul and his son Jonathan, and the men with them were staying in Gibeah, in Benjamin, while the Philistines camped at Michmash. Raiding parties went out from the Philistine camp in three detachments. One turned towards Oprah in the vicinity of Shual, another towards Beth Haron, and the third toward the borderland overlooking the valley of Zibuon, facing the desert. Not a blacksmith could be found in the whole land of Israel, because the Philistine had said, otherwise the Hebrews will make swords or spears. So all Israel went down to Philistine to have their plowshares, shares, mattocks, axes, and sickles sharpened. The price, okay, was two-thirds of a shekel for sharpening plowers and mattocks, and a third of a shekel for sharpening forks and axes and for repointing gods. So on the day of the battle, not a soldier with Saul and Jonathan had a sword or a spear in his hand. Only Saul and his son, Jonathan, had them. The basic exposition of this passage, which I want to share, is that, you see, Israel was going to war with Philistine, and the Philistine encamped around them. And they didn't have a skillful way of sharpening their tools. So when war broke out, they take these outdated weapons. You can imagine going to a war with a sickle. Our young people who are here, you don't know a sickle. We used to live in houses which are, are attacked. A sickle cuts grass. You see, going to war with a sickle. Just imagine. No, they were going with some mattocks. When the other guys had made very sophisticated weapons. And then, when they realized the war was going to be very dangerous because they didn't have anything, even their sickles, were not sharpened. So they went to ask that these weapons be sharpened. And they were charged heavy price, and they didn't actually accept. I want you to understand that context. That sometimes, and I should mention to us, that education of our children could be very expensive, and they are charging very expensive. And some of us are thinking of a cheaper way of raising our children. I'm telling you, you are going to cry, because you are actually releasing your weapon instead of going to war. And so in that context, they are just beaten hands down. You can imagine facing somebody with weapons and you have none. So in this context, we see that toward the end of Saul's reign, there is a mass departure of Israel army, 600 men. I have not read that in verse 15. When Saul was finishing, when God rejected his leadership, actually a massive army and you know in the old context, actually winning a war like this which was ahead meant actually a breakthrough. So if God was not for you, you lose the war. And that is how David actually wins against Goliath. So in this case, God is not with Saul. And then the Israel, the chosen, are actually just invaded in a quick way and they are defeated. And the raiders, who are the Philistines, in three companies, besiege Israel. They surround them in great number. You can talk of three companies, it's a huge group of 600, because the army was grouped in three, 600, 600. They besiege Israel. Israel realized they are few in number, and now they also have no blacksmith. Their arrows were inferior to those of Philistine. I'm telling you, they were going to war with the sickle equivalent to going to the streets with a stone. But I know somebody killed a police officer with a stone. 
The Philistines charged very high price to sharpen the instrument, potentially that would be used against them. That is in verse 21. The Philistines had monopoly on the iron weapons. The enemy knew what to do. The way media has done it. By the way, you understand this, we've been surrounded with many things. Some of us have very good screens the way we have, but you don't check what our children are watching. Now, everywhere you go, even in our phones, there's somebody that wants to control the monopoly of what our children loves. Now, your children ask you, I want to watch, this, I don't know, I don't know some few things in the air. You need to be very careful. That is how the Philistine army had the monopoly on this. In this background, or a background of this, that in war, the number of warriors matter. Let no one cheat you. You could be sophisticated as many of us are. And God has helped us, some of us have good money. Yeah, one of our lead person in this country, one point was asked, how much do you have? He said, I don't know how much I have, but my money can cook gideri. But you know, it's not the money that can actually save us. The Israel and many people were known to be a people of God. So the quality of warriors matter. We need some blacksmith, and they want to Reflect for many of us who are able to listen to Bishop Oginde's sermon, where are the blacksmiths? I read this and I thought I would share with us. I want us to ask ourselves how we are raising an army. How are we raising our children every day? Today we have our children in the service. When as we and our children say amen. Children say amen. You are with us here. But I want us to introspect how we are producing them, how we are discipling them. How are we transforming them for God's glory to be in the presence of God? Are we willing to bring them? When many of us are asked even to bring them for contender practice, ask them to go to this. Do we do it genuinely? This is the thing we're talking about. It is about sharpening them. Because it's very not easy for a child to come here. You saw those actions. Even as adults, when you ask do this, I don't know what was divine. Some of you have forgotten, but the children come here. Out of shaping, they are able to do that. God naturally expects us to procreate. He calls us to actually produce the offspring. And he also calls us actually to subdue the same. The call to subdue the earth, which of have already is still welcome. We produce our children, which you've done faithfully. But are we doing the call of discipling our children? Amen? Are we doing that? Praise the Lord. Yes, I'm doing this because I'm looking for practice. I have some of my children there. They also need to be shaped to sit. I'm preaching. Children, I'm preaching. Please sit down. Those who are walking, I can actually discipline you. Part of this sermon is to make you know that you are under my authority. Amen. My church father today. Hallelujah. Children, say amen. If you are walking around, pastor is preaching. I will be on your neck. I have a strong stick here, small like this. Are we discipling children to know the right thing? I give you an example. When all of us grew up, we didn't have so many seats. Thank God some of you have many seats. When visitors came home, children would just sit down. We didn't have a carpet. And our roof houses were not actually cemented. But you are asked to sit down. <laughs> I would dare to ask some of those who are walking to sit down here. Instead of removing my stick, you know what I'm saying. We need to decide for children to do the right thing. We need to transform them. Children, even when you're in school, you're given an amount of pocket money, those who are teenagers, they must use them well. And we must teach our children all things. We must teach them to put the TV on and what to watch and what not to watch. When your parent asks you to do not to do, please do that. It is a way of bringing under control. When Jesus, God says, and procreate and subdue, to subdue was bring under control. If we cannot raise three children, I have three, so I can use that example. But uh, some of us who are born, I've visited some of you and you tell me and I'm number 10 and I'm not last born, so you know what I'm saying? And our mothers could literally actually take care of you. He could feed you every day. How comes these little children, two of them, four of them, we can't bring them under control? I'm struggling in Sunday school. You have 14. Okay, we had Amzeu had 96. When there were bereavement in his Obama, the school would actually be a vacuum in the parade. You know, Mzee had 96 children. <laughs> then the Mzee, who had a lot of discipline, 
my friends, we're really not doing well. We need to raise an army. That is my message for us. Is it possible that we want to control the church and we are not procreating? I will not talk about procreating, that we have done well. But what are the dangers that we are failing to subdue or sharpen our arrows? One of the things that we see here is that we have come at a place where we have not known that raising children is a command. When God says that he commands us to go and procreate, he commands us to raise a generation, he commands us to do all we want to do. Parents and children, you should know, we are commanded to discipline you. Say amen. Today I'm preaching more of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are commanded to raise you. It is a command. It is a responsibility. There are things that you expect from me by the fact that I'm a senior pastor. There are things that you expect at home because you know you have a neighbor. There are things you expect from the government, and that's why some people are on the street. And God expects us as parents to raise a generation, but yet we are not doing it. Amen? He wants us to train them. And that you need to know. But now we have tragedies or dangers if we fail to heed this command. And this is what I'm going to share. That if we don't raise this generation, we will be besieged. We will be controlled. People will, start, will wake up one morning and realize that our children cannot go out. And many of you are doing this in the villages or in the, where you stay. You are surrounded with what you think is an enemy. Get their only children. Why don't you begin a Bible club, maybe? Because we are being surrounded. They wake up one morning and the Israelites cannot go out. They are besieged. They are, they are terrorized. You know, when an enemy surrounds you, you don't ask which weapon they are. You just stay in the house. If you are a prayer warrior, continue to intercede. Lord, visit me. Lord, we allow them go. Allow them not come. We will be besieged. We will be outsmarted. We will be asked that don't teach our children this. These guys were asked. They were not sharpening. They didn't have a blacksmith. They didn't have a lawyer. They didn't have a doctor. Something that I, we shall be exploited. So they are asked a lot of money to be paid for things. They will pay it. The time when war will break out and we realize our children are not doing well. All of us will say, Kenya, there is no education. Let's take our children to the UK. But how many of us can afford our children in the UK? Very few of us. Even some of us, when we have got scholarships, scholarships, and you are asked just to sponsor, I realize air ticket. We have to ask a whole village to sit down. And then we sell all our property to do that. We will be exploited. We shall be rendered powerless. We'll just be there, and Jonathan and Saul only will have a weapon in their hands. Dangers of being besieged. We, will, we easily get ourselves complex, and there is no army. We are surrounded. Who are surrounding our children? The media. Who are surrounding our children? Those children, we say they are bad manners. How can we change that? Okay, Israel was easily besieged by just an exodus of a single army of 600 children, or um, 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 army. They, 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 they were easily surrounded. To be besieged is to be surrounded. So you find yourself, you are living in terror, because those who are surrounding you, they are not after your protection, but after your life. And our children are surrounded. And our children, as you live, one of the things I thought I need to share with you before your parents, you need to choose to do the right thing. Because you have phones, even now. You're able to check every YouTube. We need to ask your parents whether you're watching the right YouTube. You need to ask yourself if you're asking something that will actually help you grow. For some of us who are teenagers, and parents, I'm saying this, because you're surrounded with the media, which is a great thing. All children need to write their passport, the passwords on the wall and give you. Amen. You are both them phones. Children, I'm speaking to you. I'm a youth pastor, I'm a children. All our children who are pretends with phones, your passwords are not your passwords. Amen. Amen, children, teenagers. You need to give it because we are surrounded every day. We will be outsmarted. The Philistine easily outsmarted the Israelites because they sharpened their arrows. And you know, when you read the Exodus chapter 35, there is a man that was blessed. And the Bible says that his hand was skillful to make some things. You can be outsmarted. Our children are not skillful. I want to see our children reciting. You know why I'm liking this thing? I went somewhere recently and I saw the children who are presenting. Actually, I was in the University of Eldoret on the 10th anniversary. And I loved their presentations and many poems. And it reminded me when Moi was living. And you would love children could reside passionately. I'm looking for that passion. Yeah, teacher Monica, after the number of many have come here, I want to see passion. 
So one of them will go and say, Elim ni mama yangu. Elim ni mama yangu. How many of you are in the rest of hell? I was feeling good. Elim ni mama yangu. I remember that. It is echoing. I was there with Professor Kiapi. I think he can remember that just last Wednesday. We need our children to be passionate about things that matter. Parents, you may not like this church, but allow your children to go to church. We used to be given maize as an offering with some of our parents. Go to church on Sunday and an egg. Amen. Our ch- past, our, we were taught. So when many of us actually grew up, I remember everything I used to ask is this sin. Because we had been taught to be smart on things that matter. Let our children know maths. Let them know science. Otherwise, some people will hide science and we will not know. There is a danger there. So we wake up every morning. We don't have sophisticated weapons. We don't have children who have gone from good schools. Buenas fue san. Let's take our children to good schools. In fact, one of the messages I wanted to preach to us, let's not be the people who want to serve everything, even on our children. If you see a good school and you can afford, I want to preach to you. Now, parents, children don't go and demand a good school. One of our, of our daughter, of our pastor, enrolled herself in a, in a school. <laughs> Please don't do that. But what I'm saying here is, let's allow our children to be smart. Let's teach them the way that they can do the right thing. Skillful discipleship is a great as much as having children uh, is important. Let's take our children to best schools, so have said that. Let's, let's disciple them well. Then they go to Sunday school. I'm saying let as many of us Go there. One of the things I've tasked you as a parent and even as a pastor, go there one day and sit in that class. What does my teacher in the Sunday school teach my child? Let's not be that we use Sunday school, and that is how many of you think, and if you even come for family Sunday. It is a way of escape route that let's take them to Sunday so that I can sit well and hear the sermon. That is not the thing. You are losing it. God wants you to test quality. How many of us actually check the books of our children when they come from school? I know you have taken them to the best school, but do you check the assignment they do? You will be outsmarted. These people woke up one day and they realize that their tools are not sharp. We'll wake up one day and we realize our children cannot make any decision. I went with some of them in a camp and we were making chapati and some rice and Actually, a class eight cannot make rice. You know, rice is just water and everything. They couldn't make rice. Few attempted to make chapati, but it looked like the remains that remain after Ikuku. And the pastor look at this. <laughs> but for me, I'm a love of chapati. The chapati should be soft. They should not be in any way black. They are actually from four leavers. None of them. I collected and put in my booth and slippers and asked if you remain with something. None of them came. Their parents went and bought new ones. We are being outsmarted. Our children cannot wash their inner wealth. Praise the Lord, church. Am I speaking to you or you you seem to have come to another continent? We need to teach them the ways of the Lord. Teach the children of God that this word of God is good. Read with them. Many of us, even as we sit now, you don't have your Bibles. One of the days I love, I have my iPad. But I want to encourage you, every parent, you come to Sunday, teach them that there is life here. Praise the Lord. This is the commonly read book. Let our children know this is it. Buy for them. One of our parents called me to go and pray for their son who was going to the U.S. And he bought a Bible for him. A lot of money. People are bringing a lot of gifts. And this museum produced a Bible. The son was just received. And he told the son, I have a lot of money, you know. I am paying for your school fees, you know. But when I thought of the gift to give you as you are going to the U.S., I felt this is appropriate. Buana Swesan. Let's tell children that this is the best way to go. We will be outsmarted if we think going to church is not. Make, let them come to Ali. Let them see it matters. They see you waking up every morning to go to work, but you can actually get late coming to church. What you are telling them is work matters more. You are very punctual on the death to take them go and take pizza. But you are not very punctual to bring them here. You are being outsmarted. The day we will wake up when the values are drawn down, we will be beat hand down. It is common now. When we talk about the LGBT, our children will choose. It is not, it's, now, it's a matter of time. We will battle in the courts and everywhere, but now our children need to know that this is right, this is wrong. 
Some of us grew up, and I'm telling you some things, you may not go and search my background. Some of our uncles would serve alcohol, but children would not touch that. We would not touch, it was an adult food. <laughs> Some of you would not laugh. It was like that. One of my uncle actually is a drunkard, but none of his children drinks. None of them. Some of us are not drinking, but our children. <laughs> now, this is what I'm saying. And I'm teaching you children, things are bad out there. You need to choose. You need to choose life. Because God is inviting us to be smart. There are there people who are wrong with wrong motives. They will take you out. But the end is not going to be right. I want you to work and ask yourself, is this right, this wrong? That is the message of raising our generation. How long are we going to keep all these things under the carpet? And here the world is putting it on the media. When you are not there, they're watching. They need to wake up and be smart. We wake up and we'll be charged and we'll be told to correct this child, you need 5,000 per day. And say, let it be. Expose them to the pros and cons of every decision. I've mentioned that. We are training them to do the right thing. Let our children know how to do certain things. Train them. Train them. You train your children to pray. You t otherwise, you will have no... Actually, the Bible says there were no blacksmiths. Blacksmiths, there are people who sharpen arrows. There were no blacksmiths. Teach our children to be all round. When we were growing up, I thank God for CBs. We would actually make those chapatis. We were asked how to wash utensils. I remember we were told to begin with glasses. Some of you have never taught our children. We just do things, and they see things happen. Let's avoid this instant thing that we do with the children. Expose and train them in the ways of God. One day we wake up and we realize them. The other danger that we see here, you will be exploited. I've mentioned this. That if indeed we are not going to actually teach our children in the ways of God, we'll wake up one day and somebody will tell us to correct these children, do this. And we'll have no option to tababaika and we will do what they will demand from us. In the end, we are going to be exploited. You will start crying. I know many of you are saying we don't want to get to politics. One of the things I want to actually encourage you and many of our mentors have spoken. Let our children go to every field. Education is all neutral. It just depends on the value. I love the association of young professions. Let's go to law. Let's have our children in every department. And those who want to be pastors like us, let them be. But let's allow our children to choose every career, but teach them the value. Otherwise, they will be exploited. You know how much it costs for some of our cases to be arbitrated? While they say that people actually do for you free, when you win them, win the case, is when you know how much they cut from you. Lawyers, I'm sorry, I'm just saying what I know, the little I know, I'm not a learned friend. You are exploited. But if you have some of them here, pastor will be okay, okay? Because once you win that land case, they are doing for you free. They charge a certain percentage, a very good percentage. I realize a very good percentage. It is for free. But we don't want to be exploited. Amen. We need to train our children. We, I want one day when I walk to the airport, I meet people say, you are my pastor, and I feel, yes, this is it. Otherwise, we are going to pay a heavy price. By the way, the Bible is silent whether the Israelites were able to sharpen <laughs> their tools. When they were asked the price, they didn't have money. One, they just, in fact, the Bible ends there and it says, only Jonathan and Saul had the weapon. <coughs> Where were the, the sequels that were going to be, uh, to be sharpened? We will end that place and say, we are surrendering in your arms. Do with us all you want us to do. Can our churches, homes, produce all that I've mentioned? It is possible. And children, let no one tell you. Dream any of the dreams you want to do. We want to see you so high. We can be anything. They say the sky is not the limit. When you were growing up, it was the limit. Now it's not the limit. I saw people land on the mass. I'm hoping to get some few acres there. If they you find what, praise the Lord. But that will call for many of us who are going to go to the aerospace science. And one day we are going to go in that place because they, only, they say it is a little bit habitable to be on mass. And I watch every day. They say, anything. ah, people can settle there. I believe we can conquer the space. Amen. Otherwise, when the world will become bad here, maybe that will be our rescue center. But a Christ, good Christian go there or only be those that don't know Christ. <clears throat> the last thing is that you will be powerless 
if you are not having the You grow up and you realize there's no one to help you. You become powerless if you are a soldier or you're an army, but you don't have those to protect you. Our children is an army for us. We fail actually to go where we want to go if we don't raise them up. One day we will retire and there will be no children. There will be no one to take over us. We look around and they will say, there is no army. Saul who was a leader, there is a great leader, senior pastor, but there is no follower to be able to walk with him. God wants us to check to have a, uh, a great number of, 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 of uh, army that will help us. How is our future of our church? I've said, can we entrust our estate to our children? For many of you, as you grow up now, as you move towards retirement, are you able to go away and say, things are good? Me, I remember the first time our aunt left us. Our eldest, our first cousin was in her, she was in class seven. We panicked even to sleep in a house that has doors. And many of us still panic. Okay, we cannot actually I trust our children to move from here to Mombasa. I'm sorry to speak to this. I mentioned this when you we were with men on the mountain. I know some of you, when children are going to school, they actually finish campus, but you cannot trust them. Me, I was put on a bus when I was in class eight to go to Nairobi, and I was told, you go there, you are lightweight, we'll pick you. And I had to wait. Many of us are that powerless that we actually think our children at age seven, they cannot be able to go to the shop alone and come. Those who are in class eight, those who are in form four, they cannot actually move here and go to university and come back. Let our children go by bus. A friend of mine who is a pastor was taking our children to school and the vehicle uh, did not function. They have only one family vehicle. So they chose both of them to use the matatu. So the son asked, what has changed today? <laughs> you become powerless. Let our children know the reality of life. One has a few son a parent. This is a reality. Majority of our children cannot actually manage our estates. They will not. Be like a good soldier, I love it. For military, I can see my units there. What you do, you train people for the first six months and make them harden. It's a good thing to teach our children. We have said that even during fasting, if you are fasting, don't panic. Allow them and say you are fasting. I've ever done that for Peter for three days. And no, mama was almost finishing me. But this is it. Allow them also to. They won't die, let me tell you. They won't die. Praise the Lord. Otherwise, we'll be powerless. We get at a place we don't have money, but we cannot even speak to our children and tell them, I don't have money for your school fees. We'll be powerless. And we will surrender to the enemy, and there will be done. We need the weapons. The weapons are our children. And our children need to understand what it caused them to be to know what to do, even follow after us. Application. Why I've said, I said I will not talk about this. God is asking us to raise a generation, biologically. If all of us will be Christian, our belief that you raise your children in the Christian way. On 16th, we'll be able to dedicate children here, that I'll bring them up in the ways of the Lord. That is very simple. Where we don't have, even us, the church, by the way, we allow adoption. You can adopt. For many of us who are asking for more children and you think have more power, let's entrain them, walk with them and say, these are my children. That will be good. And those whose kids, with kids, please allow your children to get the best of education. It's my message. Raise them. Take them to the best of the church. Ensure them they access what is right. Let's not allow our children to grow up. Majority men of you just grew up, but the society was good. On the west, unge patikano na zunguka zunguka. No one would sell to you alcohol. Say so alcohol is sold to anyone. In fact, if some people realize that you are rich, they will entice your children to get there so that it becomes an income for them. Let's educate and disciple our children in the ways of God. Amen? Empower our children on mentorship program to shape their future. For many of us, actually my call is that we can go for PPIs, Bible clubs, Sunday school discipleship. Family devotions. We attempt, I'm a pastor, we attempt. I should confess to you that we don't do every day. If a pastor does this, I know what you people do. Amen. You are not like us. Amen. God wants us to raise our children. Otherwise, you do a reverse discipleship. One of my mentors is doing reverse discipleship. When he went to preach and he preached for many years, he came back, the children were done. So he has come back with what we call reverse discipleship. The children have now grown. 
So eight, all of them in the table. You are out by eight, don't come. I'm telling you, it's hard to change actually such a kind of teenagers. God is inviting us to disciple our children and allow them to know the ways of God. Have a conversation about the post and trend. Walk with them. Fathers, walk with your son and tell them. I walk with my son every day and tell him, this neighbor drinks. You see, he lives well. He says no. Tell them. Don't think that one day these children will see the way you are seeing. See some things and teach them. When you see people who are driving in a passive way, tell them as an example. And that will be able to help our children, right? Because some of us have an assumption by the fact that I live in a good, gated community. <coughs> Children will grow up well. We need to raise them, teach them every day. Tell them. In fact, one of the things we are thinking here is, even this LGBT, sit with them and tell them, God did not make any man to marry what? Another man. Tell them. Praise the Lord. Tell them about those things, and that will be good. I want to conclude and say this. Um, it will cost us to raise an army. It will cost us. And it will cost you more if you don't raise. Let's be ready to pay the cost now then. One of the things I love it in some of our communities, why we are asked to pay dowry in some communities to test their man's ability to be able to show the way of raising children. Are we together? So we were taught even some of us when we were growing up, please find money so that you are able to raise a family. It will cost us something. Be ready to do that. Be sensitive on your call as a parent. You have a call, just like the senior pastor has a call. You have a call that I want to tell you. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. God has called you to raise a generation. You are children and daughter. So our discipleship is our first primary role before it comes to church. Let's raise an army, either biologically or by adoption and by discipleship. It is easy to make a child, somebody has said, and disciple them. But it is very difficult to repair men. By the way, for some of you as I preach, the only altar call is to pray to accept the circumstances the way they are. It is difficult for me to change you. Some of you, our children are already gone. But imagine you can speak word to your grandchildren, indeed, if you have some. The choice is ours. How are we going to parent? How are we going to disciple our children and our youth in the presence of God? I want us to pray this morning. I know we are guilty as judges. Maybe some of us have tried to do well, but God is inviting us to raise an army. And this morning, maybe you are a child, you are with us here, you are a preteen, and you are doing your own things. I want to pray with you. Don't fear anything. We are in a warfare. Yesterday in our devotion, we shared about the walls are broken. Things are not good. An army must be raised. Arrows must be sharpened. We must avoid all the dangers and the tragedies of being besieged, being outsmarted and being powerless. We are not powerless. The word of God is sharp, sharper than any double-edged sword. It's here to transform us and make us be effective parents. So I want to pray with some of us who are parents. Maybe you are giving up, you are surrendering, or you are a child here, and you are struggling with any of the things that I've mentioned. It could be pornography, it could be things that are affecting you, and you know it's wrong. It's wrong. It's going to lead you in a place where you're going to be beat hands down. Or maybe you are a parent, 